Hello guys, this is Pavel Oskar from Laravel Daily Team with you again and today is Monday and I thought that new week uh, should be started with a random video not about live coding or any technical tips but uh, general philosophy uh, to start the work in a better mood. So today I've prepared you seven things you need to learn outside of Laravel or inside of Laravel. What do I mean by that? Uh, I won't be talking about frameworks or languages uh, like Angular, React or Elasticsearch or anything you need to learn like that. Uh, I've, I've been searching for various uh, work projects for my fund projects and, and like my team uh, and I've noticed some similarities, some patterns, what clients really require with Laravel. So if you are bidding for a Laravel project, what is required usually, what is useful to know, to learn and to, to know how it works. So seven things. Thing number one is payment gateways or payments, whatever you call them. So dealing with payments, uh, with payment service providers is a must have if you want to go for a serious project because a serious project always involves money. Uh, like buying something, selling something and, and, and stuff like that. So uh, things like Stripe or PayPal or Braintree, which is actually owned by PayPal. So uh, you have to manipulate those things like uh, taking the payment, subscription, canceling su subscription, uh, withdrawing the money maybe, uh, invoicing stuff, some VAT maybe for Europe. A lot of things are involved. So if you won't, if you won't be able to navigate those payments, uh, payment system, you will fail at, uh, at getting the work. So thing number one is payment systems. Thing number two is manipulating the data for import and export from various formats. A usual typical example is import from CSV or export to Excel or same CSV, but there's more to that, like uh, figuring out how to get the data from HTML, from Word, from XML, uh, from JSON, uh, stuff like that, then exporting to PDF, for example, how to form a beautiful PDF document in a, in a table with some more complex structure like invoice, for example, uh, or with uh, various char sets, like how to, how to do some non-English characters in PDF, it's usually tricky, then how to deal with PDF, uh, like longer documents, uh, and there's libraries for all of that. There's DOM PDF, there are, there are packages for that, but you have to know how to use them. You have to get practical uh, experience on that. Not just know how it works, but actually have done it. Uh, maybe put up something on GitHub, on portfolio or something like that. But import and export data is pretty important, especially uh, with uh, recent trends on big data. So you have to know how to import big amount of data from CSV, like millions of rows or export, something like that. So you have to deal with that as well. So thing number two is importing and exporting the data. <clears throat> Sorry, a minute. Yeah, my voice is getting shaky. Okay, five more things. Thing number three is communication stuff. So se sending various messages to the users of your system, of your future system. So things like sending email, whether it's transactional email, like sending the password uh, reminder or, or sending the registration confirmation email uh, or payment success form or something like that. <clears throat> or whether it's marketing, like mass marketing campaigns with like MailChimp or Aweber or Drip or something like that. So email, and there are a lot of providers, so you have to know at least some of them, like Mailgun or MailChimp or, or, or others, uh, but you have to know how they work in general. Like, for example, you have to know that Mailgun requires to, uh, to approve your domain there to prevent spam and all that stuff, so you have to know how to consult the client uh, to uh, enter MX records, for example, so it's getting deeper. Again, you need to... Not, to, not only know how it works, but actually have done it. So communication emails, then SMS sending phone calls with Twilio or other providers like Nexmo recently appeared on Laravel stage. Uh, so a lot of uh, things to communicate, like Slack, for example, Skype, a lot of providers, Facebook Messenger, related stuff, chatbots maybe uh, are related. And I, I encourage you to, uh, to check out Marcel Porciot, a library uh, botman, which is really awesome for, for creating chatbots. 
So all the communication stuff in and out is really important to get your clients. So thing number three is communication, libraries, communication, um, messaging stuff. Thing number four is APIs. Uh, APIs, uh, and there are two things here, creating your own API. So for example, if you have a database table, you need to be able to get it outside to provide the API for external like mobile apps or various frameworks. Uh, front end, like how to get the data from React or Angular or Vue.js uh, app. Uh, so backend database should provide the API. So that's one thing. And then take care of the authentication, logic, Laravel passport could be useful, stuff like that. But then other things like using external APIs. And that's much more common in, in modern world, in modern projects. So uh, you, you need to be able to use like social media APIs like Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, like even social login requires their APIs. And not only that, you, you need to know how they work. So how to create a Facebook app, for example, what permissions are required there, uh, what, how to set up the staging environment there. And every API will be different for those. So same with email thing that I've mentioned above. If you want to integrate like MailChimp API, uh, it will work in a certain way and it will have certain packages for that maybe. Uh, for other APIs, it will be strictly uh, PHP based without any packages. So you would have to see URL there or something and get the response. So you, a lot of things that come with API, with every API actually. Things like Google Maps, for example, other APIs, but you need to know how general API works, how to, um, how to transform, for example, error messages, how to, uh, how to manipulate them and how to prevent uh, like bugs or disasters. But you have to know how to create API and how to consume third-party APIs. So that's things number, thing number four. Thing number five is yeah sorry thing number five is file storage uh, or bigger file storage. Pretty uh, common stuff is to get a lot of images into database or even videos, so a lot of large files, and uh, a lot of people are using Amazon S3 for that. So you have to know how to how Amazon S3 works, and of course there is a there are packages for uh, for that, and Laravel has S3 as driver. On top of that, you can use a Spotty package for like <clears throat> media library and others, or some backups, including actually backups to S3. But there are more competitors to S3. S3 is kind of a standard, uh, but uh, recently DigitalOcean launched there. I think it's called Spaces uh, or something like that. I haven't tried that yet, but uh, there are alternatives. So you have to know how to store the file there, how to consume it from there, how to authorize the user for that. So for example, if you store the file which is really sensitive and it needs to be accessible to that particular user, you need to know how to authorize that and only then provide the file. So that's number five, <coughs> file storage. Thing number six is uh, AWS world, let's put it this way. More and more projects I see uh, use AWS with all the stack of tools. To be honest, I'm not that familiar with that deeply. I use AWS EC2 like to, to store the projects, but I haven't tried too much of, uh, of internal tools, which are like, like dozens of tools like Elastic Beanstalk and uh, SQS for, for queue management, uh, like even email sending, they have a service, uh, all the scaling, RDS for database, a lot of that thing are, are related. And uh, it's actually, it's a debatable whether uh, a developer should know about that or whether you have to have a guy in your team or maybe outsource somewhere to take care of all the AWS uh, world because it's pretty huge. And the documentation from AWS, it's not that great. It's, it's deep, but it's not that easy to consume. So uh, if you have time, uh, I, would, uh, I would advise to at least get to know the world and of course, with that, you need to get uh, to know Linux. Uh, well, Linux basics. I mean, uh, you need to know how to set up your own server from scratch, probably. Of course, there's Laravel Forge. Of course, there's DigitalOcean, a lot of that thing. But for bigger projects, for more serious uh, projects uh, where scaling is involved and, and a lot of manual stuff, you need to know how, how that thing works. Uh, how to set up Linux machine from scratch to uh, to set up uh, Nginx or web server 
how to tie the domain there, how to install SSL certificate, all of that thing. Uh, it's better to know them how they work manually um, than to learn them on, on, on the production server. So that involves AWS because to set up AWS EC2, uh, you need to know how to, how to work inside of Linux environment and how to SSH and related how to create users to SSH, a lot of that thing. So thing number six is AWS world. Uh, and Linux in general for web servers and for uh, web projects environment. And final thing is uh, basically like a wrap up of all of that is actually delivering the project. How to deliver code from A to Z. So for example, if you, if you write a code in Laravel, how do you deploy it to the server? How do you deploy it to client? How do you set up a testing server for client? What are testing environments? Your local machine, maybe your colleagues' machines. So how to deal with uh, .env files? Uh, what is .env.example, for example? Uh, how to set up GitHub repository? Uh, how to branch? That, that's related, actually, Git stuff. Uh, so uh, version control system and continuous integration. So things like testing, uh, Travis CI or any CI uh, like tool, outside tool, uh, you use uh, automatic testing. I've mentioned that, maybe some TDD. Again, that's a whole new world. It's a big world of continuous integration and uh, delivering the code. On a basic level, level, you need to learn how to deliver the code from your machine to client's machine to client's server. And it shouldn't be FTP. It should be like uh, some kind of uh, version control system at least. GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, whatever you use. And uh, you need to learn how to SSH into the server, do git pull, artisan migrate, and all of those commands safely without any downtime to the project and with safe like testing. Uh, if you go deeper, then it's uh, automatic, uh, automated testing, then it's uh, staging server, then it's continuous integration with tests, uh, various uh, GitHub reports, like for example, getting green on GitHub. Uh, green checkbox, that's uh, test, tests passing, a lot of that things, that's a level deeper. But um, number seven, I would call it in, in one word or a few words, delivering the code to the production server. So the whole process. I'll repeat all the seven things I mentioned, seven things you will need to learn with Laravel projects that goes alone, along with Laravel projects. Uh, first thing is payment integrations. Second thing is import and export the data in various formats. Third thing is communication, so sending email, SMS, and stuff like that. Fourth thing is APIs, creating APIs and consuming third-party APIs. Thing number five is file storage, especially with big files and Amazon S3 related. And the thing number six, <coughs> setting up a machine, a Linux machine, and probably using AWS. Uh, stack of tools and thing number seven is actually delivering the code from scratch from your local machine to production server and possibly continuous integration with automatic testing yeah that's it that's all i wanted to tell you i hope it's useful anything else you want to add please use youtube comments follow the channel i will shoot more videos this week i've planned at least one live coding project uh well on laravel and possibly with our quick admin panel so follow the channel or follow me personally on Twitter. I tweet a lot and let's catch up online. See you in the next videos.